Hi everyone, I hope this video finds you doing well. Um, this is in Chapter 7 of Honors Algebra 2. We are going to be uh, looking at the unit circle today. And um, some things that you're going to want is if you have this worksheet that has a picture of a unit circle on it um, with three circles on the back, that would be very helpful for you to take notes on that today. Um, while you watch these videos. I also think it would be helpful to have either colored pencils or markers or something of different colors um, to use if you can. If all you have is a pencil, that's fine. Um, but if you've got some different colorful things or even just a pen, blue pen, black pen, and pencil, something like that would help too. So those would be some supplies to help the notes um, go well for you today. Uh, like I said, this is a section on the unit circle. And before we jump into the unit circle, something I just want to quickly throw out there for you to have in your notes um, are six, um, six trig functions. So we are working on um, a few you are used to. They are considered, oops, our basic trig functions. I would get these into your notes. We know that the sine of some angle theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. We know the cosine of some angle theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of some angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side. We learned that with SOHCAHTOA to help us remember if you need help remembering. All right. Then there are some reciprocal functions that it's good for you to think about. And it's really quite simple. If you think of the sine of theta to make it into a fraction, to make anything into a fraction, you put it over one. So what would happen if we took the reciprocal of all of these guys, you would end up with the reciprocal of sine of theta would be one over the sine of theta, which is considered um, the hypotenuse over the opposite side. So then the reciprocal here would be 1 over the cosine of theta, which would be adjacent. Um, nope, I'm sorry, which would be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then the reciprocal of tangent would be 1 over the tangent of theta, which would be um, adjacent over opposite. So then some vocabulary that's worth knowing is 1 over the sine of theta is called the cosecant. So cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. And then one over the cosine or the reciprocal of cosine is secant. And then um, the reciprocal of tangent is called the cotangent. Now, to be totally honest with you, when I was first learning this, I had trouble remembering um, which one was which. Well, not totally. Um, I had a little bit of trouble, like tangent and cotangent, that made sense to me that those matched up together. But to be honest, I used to get confused because sine started with an S. I thought it should match with secant, which started with an S. And cosine starting with a C, I thought it should match with cosecant because it starts with a C, and that's just not the way it is. So what you're going to have to do is come up with a trick to help you remember what's what. Um, and I'll tell you, tangent, cotangent feels easy. When um, something a student actually recommended, because I just memorized it, but a student said, well, cosine starts with a C, and secant has a C in the middle. And then sine starts with an S, and it has an S in the middle. And I thought that was okay, but I also found a C here as well. So I don't know, it's just kind of memorize it. You're gonna have to be the one that comes up with what works for you so you know that sine and cosecant goes together and cosine and secant goes together. Um, if I had thrown these onto Desmos, which I don't have ready, so I'm just gonna make a little sketch. It's kind of cool how the reciprocals end up working in a graph. What you're going to learn soon is that a sine and cosine function looks like these wavy guys. So this could represent sine or cosine. That's not a great drawing, but it gets the job done. And then cosecant and secant, the reciprocals, end up looking like little parabolas um, coming off the max and min points of that sine or cosine wave. So that's kind of a cool... Um, kind of a cool visual before you know it you're going to be very comfortable dealing with graphs like this and then the tangent is something um, kind of unique it looks like 
half of it is a right side up parabola and the other half is an upside down one and that just keeps repeating over and over again and you'll notice or maybe guess from chapter six i drew that horribly but there actually is um asymptotes between these guys and then the um inverse is just going to turn them the opposite way which is kind of cool so you'll learn um deal with that a lot once you get to pre-calc all right so just have these in your notes knowing some new vocabulary the idea of reciprocal it'll just be helpful as we move forward all right now on to our unit circle um if i were you i would on the back of your worksheet where these three circles are i would just create a fourth one for this first step okay so this is going on like a fourth circle that you create and what we're doing um is we're making a circle it has a radius of one just do your best job to sketch mine is definitely turning out to look more oval but we're going to get the idea it's sitting on the x and y axis and we need to figure out with a radius of one we're going to find points at um, the ordered pairs at zero degrees up at 90 degrees. We're going to find that ordered pair where the circle um, hits the y-axis. We're going to learn what happens over at 180, what the ordered pair would be, and then down at 270 degrees, what the ordered pair would be. And then of course at 360, the ordered pair will be back to where we started and we can just keep going around and around and around. So think about this with the radius of one to get out to this point right here, hopefully, hopefully you're saying one to the right and zero up and down. Hopefully this 90 degrees, you're saying, oh, zero to the right, we're going one up. To get over here at 180 degrees, this ordered pair, one to the left, negative one and nothing up and down would be negative one zero and then to get down at this point at 270 we're going to the right or left nothing but down one so that would land us at zero negative one okay so that's great in a second i'm going to have you add that to your unit circle but like what does that actually mean for you well now i might ask you something like um what's the cosine of 180 degrees and you're going to be like, okay, well, if I remember correctly, in an ordered pair, that x value corresponds with the cosine and the y value corresponds with the sine. So if I go over to 180 degrees, that's this point right here, and it wants the cosine. So I would pick the x value, so my answer will be negative 1. Let's try another one. I might ask you on a test or quiz or homework, What's the sine of zero degrees? And you might say, okay, zero degrees is over here. The ordered pair is one comma zero, and the sine is associated with the y value. So the sine of zero degrees is zero. Let's try another one. What if I asked you for the cosine of 90? The cosine of 90 degrees, well, 90 degrees is up here. The cosine is the x value, so it would be zero. And then finally, the sine of 90 degrees could be another example. The sine of 90 up here, the y value is 1. All right? Um, what about tangent? We haven't talked about tangent. We've said the x value is cosine. The y value is the sine. So what um, the cosine is the x sine is the y tangents really cool it's a fraction it's y divided by x so what if i asked you for the tangent of 90 degrees you go up here to 90 y over x would be 1 over 0 so you would actually say undefined and what if i asked you maybe for like the tangent of i don't know zero degrees at zero degrees, y over x is zero over one, which would just be zero. Oh, sorry, that got in the way. Tangent of 90, when you get that zero in the denominator, you'd say um, undefined. So there is a nice start to our um, unit circle. We're gonna take this spinner and we're gonna go all the way around. Let's fill in what we know. At zero or 360 degrees, we're at one comma zero. 
at 90 degrees, we're at 0, 1. At 180 degrees, we're at negative 1, 0. And at 270, we're at 0, negative 1. And while we're at it, just while I'm looking at it, um, let's fill out a little bit more of this. I see right here it says quadrant 1. That is meant to remind you that from the origin, anything in quadrant 1, the x value will be positive and so will the y value. Because to get to any of these points on the circle, you go to the right and up. So all of these in quadrant one would be positive, positive. From videos before, hopefully you remember quadrant two to the left and up is negative, positive, x, because we go to the left and up. And then quadrant three, we go to the left and down. So both the x and the y value for these guys will be negative. And then quadrant four to go to the right and down, we're gonna go to the right so the x is positive. Oops, I wrote that in the wrong spot. That would go right there. Yikes. Sorry about that. All right, so that would go right there, a plus minus. All right, let's go ahead now. Um, I'm going to set, or I'm not going to set this worksheet aside. What you should do is flip to this back side and label this next one. 30 degrees and if you want to do the work right here with your 30 degrees that is what I highly recommend I'm going to um, use a little bit of a bigger piece of paper just so my notes can be more clear for you okay so with our 30 degrees um, let's make a reference angle in quadrant one that is 30 degrees so if we think about this remember our initial side is always that positive x-axis I'm going to say 30 degrees. It's not so big. It's going to be like right about there. Okay. And then when you make your reference angle, you drop down to the nearest X axis right there. Um, so we have a 90 here and a 60 here. So let's think about that for just a second over on the side. I'm going to draw a little picture of my 30, 60, 90 that I've created. And let's think about this. Opposite the 30, um, oh, let me back up a little bit. What we're going to do here is if we put this into um, the unit circle, I'm going to always have the hypotenuse be at 1. Okay, that's going to be our rule of thumb here. Because if you think of the unit circle... This length right here is not one because there's this little space before it gets to the circle, but the hypotenuse will hit the circle. So in these problems, that hypotenuse there is going to be a one. So now let's figure out what's going on. Opposite the 30 is n, opposite the 60 is n root three, and opposite the 90 is two n. So if I solve for n right here, 2n equals 1, I divide both sides by 2, it looks like n equals 1 half. So that means this vertical side is 1 half, and this guy, this n root 3, is, um, is going to be a 1 half root 3, which I'm going to change to be square root of 3 over 2. So if I put that into my picture here, that gives me a square root of 3 over 2, and a positive one half, and then that hypotenuse of positive one because we're in the unit circle, okay? So that's really kind of neat. Um, what that tells us is that this ordered pair right here at the end of the hypotenuse where it meets the circle, well, it looks like I go root three over two to the right and up one half, all right? That's kind of cool. Now let's figure out what the ordered pair would be here in quadrant two. So you've got like your unit circle coming down. We're going to draw that reference angle of 30 in um, quadrant two. Drop down that height, bow ties and butterflies, not hourglasses. We find that nearest x-axis. And now let's think about it. Opposite the 30 is the n. It's one half. Opposite the 90 was the hypotenuse of 1, and opposite the 60 was that same square root of 3 over 2. But here's where we have to be super careful. 
over here from the origin, I went to the right and up. So it was a positive root three over two and a positive one half. But to get to this point in quadrant two, remember how we're going to the left and up? So the X value is negative, the Y value is positive. So this ordered pair is gonna be negative root three over two, positive one half. So that's kind of neat, like the square root of three over two and the one half stayed in the same spot, but when I was in quadrant two, um, it became, uh, the X value became a negative. So if I wrote here, what about quadrant two? Well, we just did it. Now quadrant two, the reference angle is 30. That's really 150 degrees because it has that reference angle of 30, 180 minus 30 is 150. So quadrant two at 150 degrees, we're at negative root three over two comma one half. What about quadrant three? How many degrees is that? If we keep drawing our unit circle and do, should have maybe not draw, written that so big because it's covering up our next circle. I'm gonna move that. So I draw the reference angle in quadrant three. So my 30 degrees is there. I connect it with the nearest X axis. So I have my 30, 60, 90. And then I recall opposite the 30, opposite the 30, that's the one half. Opposite the 60 is the root three over two. I already have that written down. And opposite the 90, that's the radius or the hypotenuse, which is one again. I guess what I wanna think about now is from the origin, I'm going to the point on the circle, so it's right down here. It looks like from the origin, I have to go root three over to the left and one half down. So it's gonna be a negative root three over two, comma negative one half, which makes sense because everything in quadrant three, both the X and the Y are going to be negative. All right, so how many degrees was quadrant three? We went 180 plus 30 more, that's at 210 degrees. So at 210 degrees, we have um, the ordered pair, negative root three over two, negative one half. We're at 150 degrees. We've got negative root three over two, positive one half. And at 30 degrees, we have the positive root three over two, positive one half. All right, let's finish. What about quarter, um, quad, not quarter four, quadrant four. When we look at quadrant four, we draw in that 30 degree reference angle, connect it with the nearest X axis. Remember it's this ordered pair right here where the hypotenuse or the triangle um, meets the unit circle. Here was the 30 degrees, the 90 and the 60. I think I kind of am getting the hang of it. Opposite the 30, well in all these triangles, opposite the 30 is one half. Opposite the 60 is the root three over two, which I already drew. I wish I'd have drawn it a little better. And then opposite the 90 is that hypotenuse of one. Now keep in mind from the origin, we're going root three over two to the right. So that's gonna be positive, but we are going down one half. So it's gonna be a positive root three over two, negative one half, which makes sense because everything in quadrant four was a um, X value was positive, Y value was negative. And how many degrees is that at this point? Well, it's not all the way around 360. We have to take 30 off. So it's gonna be 330 degrees around. So what you can do now is I'm gonna color coordinate a little bit. I did some of this work in red. So I'm going to do this work in red um, on my, Um, on my unit circle. And one thing if you wanted, you can kind of add, you can see those bow ties there if you wanted to. So it really sticks out that those are the 30 degree angles we're working with. So here, the first 30 degree angle we declared was root three over two, comma one half. And then in quadrant two, it was at 150 degrees. It was the negative root three over two, comma, one half. And then if you remind yourself where that came from, okay. 
And then quadrant three, where were we at in quadrant three? 210 degrees right here was the negative root three over two, negative one half. And then at 330, we had the positive root three over two, negative one half. All right, so we're slowly working away around the circle. Before we know it, we've already gotten um, eight points made. The four that were at the X and Y axes, and now the four um, that were at the 30, um, the 30 degree reference angles. We have um, eight done, eight more to go. I'm going to stop this video and start a new one so you can take a break, but come back, watch that next video. We're going to do the 60 degree reference angles next.